Night in the southern hemisphere is full of ghosts from the past. When darkness falls, shadows come to life in the ancient forests of northeast Australia. The yellow-bellied gliders move silently around the trunks of the dense forest in search of sap and resin. When the dinosaurs prowled around the jungles of Gondwana, their cycle of activity took place during the daytime, determined by the sun, which activated their gigantic circulatory systems. At that time, the mammals were nocturnal creatures who, whenever possible, avoided encounters with the enormous lizards. The habits of those first marsupials can still be observed in many of the species of present-day Australia, and the nights are alive with furtive movements. The possums, along with the kangaroos, are considered the most evolved of the marsupials, but despite this, they remain faithful to the nocturnal traditions of their origins. Millions of years in the dark of the jungle has equipped them with excellent climbing skills and the ability to see and hear in the humid shadows of their environment. Like the gliders, the possums, such as this bush-tailed variety, lick the sap which oozes from a broken branch or a damaged tree trunk. Climbing is for them synonymous with survival. There are now no large predators in Australia, but the possums are small animals and this makes them vulnerable to the carnivorous marsupials. For the European scientists, basing their studies on the original zoological classifications, it was clear that the marsupials were inferior to the mammals that inhabited the old continent of Europe. So much so that they named the mammals of this European group eutherians, which in Greek means perfect mammals. For these zoologists, the eutherian mammals had displaced their competitors because they were able to keep their young inside their bodies until they were completely formed whereas the young of the marsupials complete their development in the pouch used for this purpose. But if the first zoological classification had been carried out in Sydney instead of in the ancient Athens, the conclusions might well have been very different. The marsupials were, it is true, displaced by the eutherian mammals, but the reasons for this are to be found not in the pouches of the marsupials, but rather at the other end. And to understand why, nothing better than to return to the place where the struggle for survival originally took place. The jungles of South America were, like those of Australia, once part of Gondwana. Back then, monotremes, marsupials and eutherians coexisted in the primeval forests. But the last of these three, little by little, gained ground as their new evolutionary prototypes improved. And these monkeys of the new world are the best examples of the final victors. The ability to adapt, which tipped the balance, was not based on the different ways of giving birth, but rather on the development of the brain, the center where information and associations are stored. It was not therefore a question of the marsupial's pouch versus the placenta, but something much more effective and decisive, intelligence. The new mammals not only had placentas, they were also more intelligent, and they took over the majority of the habitats of the monotremes and the marsupials. 
But defeat was not quite as absolute as people tend to think. Because in the South American night, old ghosts from Gondwana still hide. This is an opossum, a marsupial, which is so well equipped to compete against its eternal rivals that not only has it not disappeared from South America, it has even managed to conquer the lands of the north of the continent. However, despite these occasional victories, the marsupials of Gondwana would not have achieved the variety they now display if geology and luck had not been on their side. Everything began with a great journey across the Indian Ocean millions of years ago. When Australia separated from the continental landmass, there were no Eutherian mammals living in its territory. And the vast island drifted north, leaving the marsupials and the monotremes free from competitors. This was just the beginning of the great marsupial adventure, a period of enormous changes. On its journey northwards, Australia became increasingly warm and its jungles became smaller. The climate of the island slowly changed. The plants had to adapt or die. New species gave birth to new forests, more open and without the splendor of the old jungles, but composed of experts in survival. And the old plants of the southern supercontinent gave way to others, more modern and much more effective, flowering plants. Flowering plants and more open spaces had immediate consequences for the zoology of Australia. The new forests were more accessible than the jungles, and the flowers were attractive, appetizing, and highly nutritious food sources. And very soon, animals arrived to eat them. The number of insects rapidly multiplied and became valuable allies in pollination, so the plants also benefited and spread throughout the length and breadth of the drifting continent. For the birds, the change was a twofold advantage because many of them fed on the ever more numerous insects, while for others, the flowers were valuable sources of energy. And like the birds, the mammals also took advantage of this constant increase in resources. The hare wallabies made double use of the bush forests. Not only did they eat the flowers, fruits and shoots, but they also found here a safe refuge in which to live. This spectacled hare wallaby is marking its territory in the full light of day. Because once the enormous lizards of Gondwana had disappeared, the daylight hours were free from these colossal competitors and some marsupials became diurnal. The quokka is a survivor of the changing forests. Although it prefers the dense jungles, in the new bush forests it found sufficient vegetation to survive and ended up colonizing them. <laughs> 